Greetings everyone, I'm Mar. Once again, this is my opinion. As you can tell from the title, I am continuing to trek through the episodes of Everybody Loves Raymond. We are now on episode 4 of season 5, Meant to Be. Before we get too far into the episode, just a reminder, if you want to support the channel, both the Patreon and the PayPal links are down below. If you want to do continued support, go to Patreon. You will get access to videos early, and you will also be able to suggest topics for future videos. If you just want to do one-off support or a one-off request, go with the PayPal link. Now, meant to be, this is a Robert and Amy episode, and this is when they have their big breakup. I mean, their season three breakup was bad, but they got back together. And between then and now, it's been like this. They're together for a while. The next time we see Amy, they break up. It keeps going back and forth. This is their big breakup. We'll see them together again eventually, but they don't get back together together until season seven. So, yearish from now, we'll be talking about there. And that episode actually has probably one of Robert's best little character monologue moments. And it's one that once we get to, it's probably going to definitely hit me here a little bit more, considering I'm now going into the age group that that episode would more be written for. I mean, you can enjoy this at any age, but there's certain ages that some parts of this show are going to hit you more than others. As I've said, there's a lot of parts of this show as I'm going through it that I do identify with a lot more. And that's just a little lead in there. And of course, before then, we're going to get to the rant episode, but I'll save that for when we get there. Now, I didn't really bring this up in the Italy episode. Probably should have, because it's the beginning of the season, so I should really be talking about this stuff there. But this show got a little bit more Emmy love here. It won three primetime Emmys for this season. Heaton won for Best Actress. Uh, Roberts won for Supporting Actress. And Italy won for Best sound mixing that episode also got a cinematography nomination and there was also an editing nomination in there and uh, Ray and Peter Boyle also received acting nominations in there but they did not win which is why there's that little joke I think in the season 6 bloopers where he's like she's got, she's got two Emmys I got none she's got two Emmys I got none or maybe she already had her other Emmy at that point I know that I know there's a blooper for that in there somewhere and it also, that little Friends magic joke that they mentioned on the commentaries, it showed it was a little true because they tied both Friends and Monday Night Football for fifth overall in the season when it comes to views. So this is when they're really starting to get the viewership in. Raymond? That whole never ends for Raymond really is true there. Now, Meant to Be is written by Kathy Ann Stump and Jennifer Crittenden, who, as I mentioned before, wrote Robert's Divorce, and later on in this season, Let's Fix Robert. I'm sensing a pattern here with the episode she's doing around this time. And of course it has the character Joanne making her second and final appearance. We've got a little Marco cameo at the end. And of course Monica Horan is Amy in here. Now before I talk about the plot proper note, I'm going to go into my whole thing about what they did with Robert and Amy's relationship here. Now I've said before, taking something from the season 6 uh, clip show that with comedy you have to have friction which is true and that's been the whole thing going here which has led into my phrase sitcom writing however there is such a thing as too much tension to where it starts to become distracting and it becomes okay they're just doing this just to artificially create this so that they have something to write about and while it is true that relationships do have things they come and go and all that with this one it just feels weird that Robert would go this route. That, you know, the whole thing that happened in the Italy episode. I mean, Amy being hurt and all that I get when with Robert talking to Joanne, but they're just talking. He's catching up with an ex. Sometimes that happens. I mean, you guys end on bad terms and years later, you start talking and you can be friends. Even if you're just acquaintances, you can at least be civil. Now, from how they've been talking about Robert and his divorce and what we saw in the episode, you kind of look at it and go, probably not, but you never know. I mean, they did have a spark originally, so maybe that spark can go down to the friendship area. But, of course, with how this stuff goes, we'll never actually know for certain, and 
have a feeling if they did have him, Marie probably would have been giving him this look the whole time. Uh, if you're wondering, that's supposed to be my uh, Liana Mormont look. <laughs> Doesn't really work as well coming from me. Now, with that said, it's just watching Robert go this route with the three women, it's like, ee. I mean, with Stefania works within the context of Italy, and I buy it there. But when we get to this episode, a couple episodes later, it's like, really? He's really thinking about it? And this whole thing of the breakup is just Robert creating the problem for himself and acting really, you say, probably someone a couple decades younger. But then with how people are nowadays, you could say maybe a decade younger. Maybe he maybe wouldn't be a decade younger now. But it's one of those things you look at and go, Robert, Robert, Robert. You made this problem yourself and now you're dealing with it. But it is one aspect of it. Not to the same level when it comes to like juggling the three women, but the self-sabotage of relationships because of your own issues. I do identify with that a little bit. I'm not going to go into it too much. I don't want to get too personal on here, but it does really hit home a little bit. For different reasons, of course, but it's something that watching them like, yeah. But when it comes to it being from you juggling three women, that's something that you and I would be like, really? What an idiot. Especially since one of them, there was no romantic thing there, and the other one just seemed more like it'd be a fling, which that's going to come up in another episode. I mean, I, I don't have the DVD set within arm's reach, and I don't want to stop the recording and gra go to grab it. But uh, then another 10 episodes is going to come up and see that there's nothing there either. Now, the episode, as you can kind of guess, Robert is in a predicament. He has Joanne, who he's talking with, he has Stefania in Italy, and then him and Amy are kind of in a gray area. What exactly this area is, they haven't really specified yet. You know, they haven't really been talking as much as they were before. I'm actually surprised at this point Amy didn't break up with him. I mean, in season four, we saw her throw a box at his head and break up with him just because of what she got for her birthday, which was a stupid reason to break up with someone. And then, of course, here... Robert's trying to figure out what to do, and he decides, you know what, I'm going to stay with Amy after talking with Ray and Frank, which is like, really? Ray and Frank? But they're the other males in his life, and he's like, all right, we're going to talk about it. And they finally convince him that Amy is the best one. Some of it's a little comedic, like Ray putting in, you know, like, technically you're the only one she's had sex with, so you can't really disappoint her. And, you know, just think of all the stuff you talked about. I mean, Joanne, enough said. Stefania, that was more like a fling. And then all the deep talks they've had with Amy, which is another thing I identify with in this situation. And he decides he's going to stay with Amy. But here is where his whole thing falls apart because he says he's going to start fresh and he's going to confess everything to her. Which Frank and Ray really go and try to tell him it's a stupid reason, which I get on board with a little bit. But their justification is what kills it. And here's a couple things I jotted down that they say in this one. Here's what Frank says at one point. You never tell a woman anything, even if they figure it out, you deny. That really does sum up Frank as a character when it comes to relationships and all that. And you can kind of see why him and Marie have that kind of relationship. But that's a stupid thing. It's like, really? I understand wanting to be selectively honest on stuff. You know, white lies about small stuff. But certain things about this you want to be honest with. Like, telling about Joanne, I get but the thing there is you want to tell him to be honest, but you want to tell him to be honest in spurts and be careful how you word it. With Joanne, probably should not tell Amy about that for a while, what you've been talking about. And Stefania, I don't know if that's actually something to tell until years later where they're comfortable in their relationship and you tell them then. But that's one of those weird things. You're like, hmm, it could go any which way but saying even if they figure it out you deny that just digs your grave even worse and then of course ray saying you can't believe the yelling and then he's like you know what i'm going to tell my girlfriend about my other girlfriends that part of it you kind of get because that's where you end up in a down by the station early in the morning type of situation if you're not familiar with that song one part of the song goes went to the drugstore nearly lost my life so with that one thankfully the only time we ever see all three of these women in the same room is later on down the line well then again it's only two of them actually we never see all three of them in the same room but can you imagine that they would have probably doggy pelled on robert and went to beat the crap out of him 
As you can guess, Robert does tell Amy the truth about Joanne. But it's just the way he tells her and the way that she takes it that leads to the comedy of errors here. In the lead up. You know, Robert's, you know, doing the whole romantic thing, pouring the wine. Hey, was it to your liking? Nice, schmoozy, cheesy, romantic stuff, which added to the whole cheesy thing. They're at Marco's, what's going to be Marco's Pizzeria soon. It's Nemo's, which, of course, if I remember correctly, this is after Nemo's actor died. So you never see Nemo in this whole scene. You see uh, some of the other characters around there and some background players, but you don't see Nemo. Now, as he's going along, you can tell what's going through Amy's head. And Monica plays this beautifully, where she thinks that she's about to get the question. You can tell from how she's anticipating it. And then you can see the disappointment eating at her, when instead of saying, I love you, Amy, will you marry me? Robert instead says, that is why I feel it's important to tell you about Joanne. And you can see she's like, what? I mean, she knows that he's been talking with Joanne at this point, obvious. But now he's actually telling her what Joanne has been hinting at. Joanne has been hinting about trying to get back together. Now, Robert, to her, does not make it blatantly clear that he's been interested about it. He said, you know, he hasn't been sure what he's wanted, which is something that's been a recurring character thing for him the last couple seasons. Probably not the best thing to say after mentioning that, because it makes it sound like you are interested in getting back together with your ex when he never really says that. And, of course, Amy goes off on him. I put in my notes she misconstrues the context of the conversation, which is kind of true. She assumes it's about the two getting back together. And with how he words everything, Robert makes it sound like he's settling for Amy. And that is really what sends her over the line. And she storms off with the leftovers, leaving... Robert by himself. And of course, she goes to Ray and Deborah's and starts yelling at them about it. You know, like, more complaint yelling. He's impossible. And this is where the next big blow when this whole thing goes because who spills the beans about Stefania? Deborah. And you could tell that Deborah is trying to backpedal it when she realizes that Amy had no clue about Stefania. And she's like, oh crap. And of course, at this point, when Robert does show up, Every bit of anger coming from Amy is completely justified. Because there really is no excuse for what Robert did in Italy was to find it. Even though the most that we have confirmation that they did was kiss. It's still one of those things where like, really Robert, you decided to do that? Talking with Joanne, like I've mentioned before, you could kind of get around with. But the whole thing with Stefania. That's my little... Visual metaphor for what Amy essentially does here. She interrogates Robert. And I just love the way it's shot. With camera down for her, up for him. And then just the look of murder and malice in her eyes. And the way that Monica inflects her voice here. She's asking the questions. And Brad Garrett sells. He's like, oh, he's like a cowering boy even though he's bigger than her. And to add to it when it does a back shot... She steps onto the couch twice and slaps him across the face and then storms out. And before it goes to commercial, Ray has probably one of the best lines involving that ever. When she got up back on the couch the second time, what did you think she was going to do? Good point. First time, you could tell she was going to slap him. What did he think was going to happen the second time? Her kiss him and say, I'm sorry? Nope. I think that he let her do that because he knew deep down in his heart he deserved it. Even though after the fact, he does get a little snippy with Deborah about it. Which you kind of get because Deborah did let that cat out of the bag without realizing it. It's not like she did it maliciously. If she wanted to do it maliciously, she could have called up Amy and go, Robert's been cheating on you. Even not physically, emotionally. But no, she lets Robert have it. Like, why did you do this? You had this perfect relationship with Amy. And then you talked to Joanne, he fooled around with Stefania, and now it's in the dumper. I mean, from a retrospect con standpoint, we know that this is going to end well in a couple seasons' time, and they'll get back together. But at this point, it's like, oh my god. You had your chance, Robert, and you blew it! You blew it! And that's the end of it. Now, there, he does try to get back with Joanne, but it seems like Joanne, her own only thing is physical here. She doesn't want the romantic thing. She just wants the physical and sexual part of their relationship, and things go wrong there. 
Robert tries very briefly with Stefania. Yeah, that doesn't go all right. And at the end of the episode, he comes into it with one relationship and two potential budding ones, and he leaves the relationship a single man. I'd like I'd say poor Robert, but he did. Uh, this whole thing is a mess of his own design. He just had to stay faithful to Amy after all that, and went like that. So that little seed that they planted at the end of the season four finale has finally took hold. And we're going to see little bits and pieces of it throughout the rest of the season. And we will get to those seeds and discuss their watering when they come out of the ground, as it were. Now, there are two deleted scenes for this episode. And I was debating whether to talk about them first or wait until afterwards, but I think waiting to discuss them after talking about the main episodes is more fitting because the second one especially ties a little bit into stuff later. Now, the first one would have been the original opening for the episode where Ray interrupts Deborah while she's cutting a sandwich, telling her, no, no, cut it that way, no, cut it this way, cut it that way, thinking it's for him, and then she's like, this is my sandwich. Then Robert enters. You can tell there's something on his mind. He has a postcard in his hand. It's a card he got in the mail from Stefania, and there's a kiss on it. And it turns out he's been kissing it. And then, of course, Deborah does a little lecture to Robert about cheating on Amy with Stefania, which the language of it would tie back in later to both Deborah talking to Amy and telling her about Stefania, and, of course, her whole longer lecture to Robert that I just went over. So that would have been a nice little thing there. But cutting it out it doesn't really hurt the whole episode. But it does cut out that one little connection. But it was nice that it's there for the live audience. And of course, since it's on the DVD and with how they set up the deleted scenes for the later seasons, you can go and watch them before the episode and then watch the episode pl proper and you still have that context. Well, with these ones, I've been watching the deleted scenes first just so there's stuff like that. I can make the little connections there for y'all. Now, the second one is a little prologue that leads into the way the episode begins on the DVD and in syndication. And that is the boys having breakfast and leads into their little discussion about who to be with. Now it begins with Frank coming in, being annoyed that Marie purchased tissues that already had lotion in them. And as he puts it, it's my job to wet them. Now, the funny thing about this is that a later episode will connect back to this. That's going to be the episode where Ray gets tired of not making any say in the purchases for the house, and he's going to buy those. And Frank's still going to be annoyed with them, so that will be interesting. That's one of those things that you watch at a lead scenes, and like, oh, it's just like how in the pilot episode originally they had a scene where Frank was talking about the one guy that did the Reader's Digest thing, and then they decided to keep that idea, and they got a whole episode out of it. Uh, from there, it leads into it proper. You don't really lose a lot by cutting that out, and I think the episode actually begins stronger with just them leading into the conversation. You don't have that unnecessary fluff. Cutting these two, even though you lose that one connection, you lose the direct opening there, you trim the fat and it makes the episode stronger overall, better paced. And overall, this is a pretty good episode. Nice way to follow that little seed, even though I do think the whole thing of them breaking up Robert and Amy this way does feel a little artificial and at times it does seem a little out of character for Robert but considering how he's been his whole life you could kind of see why he decided to go this route and maybe it was making him feel good and he decided he'll take it where he can get it get all that dopamine and other good hormones and then now he's crashed and he's gonna have to figure out a way to come out of it poor Robert only way I'm gonna say it now now next episode it's gonna be a family centered one but it's going to be one I haven't said in a while, but could be any season. But I think it works better here because of the age of the kids. Because it's going to it centers around the kids a little bit, even though they're only in a handful of scenes. And it involves a character that's been mentioned a couple times, but we've never really had an episode centered around this character. And that, of course, is Allie's hamster, Pumpernickel. Till next time, guys. <laughs>